If you've ever wondered what playstyles you can imitate to try to improve your own game, this is probably at the top of the list. I call this the minimal building playstyle, and it's inspired by Epic Whale. Throughout this video, I'm going to break down what this is, why it's good to practice like this, and all the gameplay you see on screen is going to be me trying to imitate this playstyle. Before we hop into the video, please consider using code JIVENTV in the Fortnite item shop, or at least make sure you're using somebody's code because it helps us out a ton. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So what is the minimal building playstyle? It's pretty much what it sounds like. You try to limit the amount of builds you're placing and focus most of your energy on tracking the opponent with your shotgun out, getting angles, playing positioning, and by practicing this playstyle it'll help improve your aim, your tracking of the opponent, and awareness during fights. It'll help you see more clearly when you have an opportunity to make a play on the enemy. It may sound like minimizing building is a really bad idea, but when I was VOD reviewing Epic Whale's W key game during the solo cash cup, he plays second by the way. During his early and mid game fights, he 100% had this playstyle. Throughout the fight, he would have his gun out the entire time, he would still build a good amount, but every single time he built, it would be really really fast and he would immediately pull his shotgun out and start tracking his opponent again. He only built strategically trying to get angles and positioning on the enemy, and then if he saw a peace control play he would build that peace control really fast but immediately pull his gun back out. This is so good because then the enemy will never have a really safe opportunity to shoot you because you're always going to have your gun out being able to deal counter damage. And on top of that if the player you're fighting against exposes themselves for even a split second you'll have your gun out ready to shoot rather than have your builds out and have that slight delay of pulling out your shotgun. So what I did and what I recommend you to do as well is simply hop into arena one day with the goal of imitating this playstyle for the entire day. Even if you don't stick with this playstyle, it can really help you improve your overall awareness in a fight. Even if you don't usually play this playstyle, practicing this way can help improve your awareness and tracking and aim when you're not playing this playstyle. It's just good practice. People ask me all the time, how do you improve your tracking? And this is probably the best way, just practicing this playstyle. Now, a couple more things that help out with this playstyle is kind of slowing down your mouse movement if you're on keyboard and mouse and focusing on tracking the opponent through builds. I would try to keep my crosshair lined up with where they are so that I can easily hear them, see them, and keep track of them. This will also help out your aim a lot, just slowing down your playstyle and being a lot more calculated with everything you do. Now for the rest of this video, I'm mostly going to be showing highlights and stopping by here and there with little tips and breaking down some of these clips. We had some absolutely nasty plays throughout this. What I recommend you do is really get an understanding of this playstyle by watching this footage and then hopping into arena every couple days and practicing with this playstyle. I'm going to be doing the same thing because I know it's going to help me out with cash cups in the future and just help me improve my tracking. The game you just saw on screen was my first game on. We dropped a little 16 kill dub. And up next, we have the second game. We started off with a little win streak. In this first fight that you're seeing, this guy was just cranking to the moon. But dude did not hit a single shot on me because I was just constantly getting angles on him. I had my shotgun out almost the whole time and I played this fight super calculated. Because I was tracking him the whole time, I saw any angles he was going to get on me and I would block them off ahead of time. On top of that, I was able to get a lot of side jump shots because I always knew where he was and I was always ready for when he slipped up and left an angle open. That's what's so effective about this playstyle. You miss way less opportunities because you constantly know where the enemy is. So super calculated fight right there, but check this one out. When I'm in a situation like this, I try to bait them to take right hand peek shots on me, but because I'm hugging my wall like this, I'm able to usually get more damage dealt than they deal to me. And then a lot of times they'll psycho forward into the box that I have set up for them as a trap. And then I get a lot of damage dealt there and finish the fight. This game was super dead after that really long fight. So it was a low kill win, 
but we absolutely destroyed the rest of the lobby. That situation you just saw, I actually invented a new way to handle it that's super optimal. I'm gonna have details on that coming soon. But we cleaned up this last guy with the same peak method that I was just talking about, hugging the wall, taking right hand peaks, beautiful. On to the next game. So this fight here was really, really scuffed. I got like jumped on by seven people at Steamy and had to dip, and I was completely shambles in this fight. But I outplay him with this playstyle so well here. As you can see, I hold that angle to take a peek shot. I did this countless times throughout the video. It works really well when the opponent is psychoing you like crazy. All you gotta do is be ready to build the floor above you after you take your shot. That way they can't shoot you as well. Next up, we're gonna take a look at this playstyle during a hot drop. Between the fights at Believer here and my rotate to Boney, I must have found like 15 people and got 11 kills. There were some nasty moments, so I'll be back to break down some stuff in a bit. So this fight here is a really good example. I moved pretty fast in this fight and built a good amount, but it was all calculated. The key thing about this playstyle is you want to be tracking your opponent. That's the key thing. Obviously, in a lot of situations, you're still going to need to build to outplay your opponent. But notice how as soon as I got my opponent pieced up here, I slowed down and really tried to track their movement, holding angles on them to get the most optimal finish to this fight. So we got to Boney here, and this was literally like Call of Duty Zombies, just wave after wave of players rotating in. It was actually insane. If I would have won this game, it probably would have been a 25 bomb but we absolutely ran through kids with this playstyle. You'll notice in the sequence of fights that I just always knew where the enemy was. My building was really smooth, that way it was easy to track my opponents while I was building. Even though there were like six people here, I constantly was tracking everybody and was very calculated, so check this out. Isn't this ridiculous how many people are showing up? I actually couldn't believe this. All right, we're gonna need an instant replay there. So notice how the enemy is just holding this peak on me. Seeing that he wasn't budging at all, I decided to go for the launch pad move and it caught him off guard so much. 
god tier play but sadly the fun came to an end and this kid just walked right through my wall was a ggs definitely could have been like a 25 kill win we've got one more game to check out here this was another great example of this play style all of this stuff is from one stream where we tried playing like this for about three hours straight anyways this game had so many perfect plays where you can tell i was playing this play style if you've made it this far in the video don't forget to hit that like button sub if you're new use code jivin tv and enjoy this last game